Well, good morning. It's time for Cup of Hope. I'm Stephanie Winslow, and I'm so grateful to be with you this morning to bring to you another message from the Word of God. Let's lift up our cups this morning and ask the Lord to fill us up with the hope that he has in store for us by the power of his word. God is so good. He is um, moving and working, and uh, if we are paying attention, we get to see him in the little things of life and the big things of life. He's there with us through every step of the way. Um, I just have to share a story because it was just cool. Uh, yesterday, Marshall was, was digging to where we were replanting a palm tree and so he's digging in the dirt he hits a piece of rock in the ground like solid rock not far down at the place we were wanting to put the tree um, and so he just literally stopped and paused for a minute and said lord have mercy on this um, and the rock as he like hit it, it's broke apart. And um, it once was solid piece of rock and then it started breaking apart. And he was just like, kind of shocked. Is this really <laughs> happening? Um, and it, so God cares about the little details of our life. He cares about us replanting a plant and the, the, the uh, resistance that we may be facing in our life. So maybe that resistance isn't digging through the rock in the ground, but maybe that resistance is living um, in opposition to the way the, the world says is okay to live and knowing that the truth that we're standing upon because we are reading the Bible, um, that it may cause division and separation between us and someone else. Um, but God's got it and God it honors us when we stand firm on his promises, when we stand firm on his word and trust in him. Trust him with the little things and the big things. Trust him with our, our lives when we're digging that, that hole for our plant or when we're making life-changing decisions that impact our entire family. So God has us in the middle of all of it. We can trust him. And this week, we've been walking through um, some of the virtues that as believers, as we get to know God, as we spend time and we're investing in Him and our relationship with Him, we begin to change from the inside out. God takes that heart of stone that we once had and makes it a heart of flesh. But over time, that heart of flesh gets calloused. And so as we are talking about these different virtues, this is an opportunity for us to ask God to shave off the callus that has been built up on our hearts as we have grown over the years, especially for those of us who have been um, surrounded by Christianity our entire life. It's not something new to us. Uh, we often get calloused uh, by, by things, by, by circumstances, and uh, we forget what it's like to really have a heart of flesh. And so today our prayer, we're praying to grow in, that's what this, the, kind of the virtues where we've been praying that God would help us to grow in. Today is self-control. Help us, Lord, to grow in self-control. We're gonna look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses six and eight. It says, so be on your guard not asleep like others. Stay alert and be clear-headed. But let us not who live in the light, but let us who live in the light be clear-headed, protected by the armor of faith and love, and wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation. So it talks about this, this idea of self-control is almost like a guard standing watch at his watchtower or a, a guard at a gate. That our self-control will act as a guard for us. It is a, an, um, a protective layer between us and what's happening out here. So these circumstances out here that are happening, I can't control, I don't know how to fix. Uh, it's not my job to fix. And so this wall of self-protection that is self-control, it kind of, it keeps me um, 
from making decisions, making judgments, making choices, uh, even responses and reactions to things that would not be God's best choice for me. The And what the this says that we're to stay alert and be clear-headed. Some of the other verses say be, be sober-minded and self-controlled. Clear-headed could be self-controlled or alert and sober. That means that we are calm and collected in our spirit, that we respond more than we react. We don't uh, just spout back when someone offends us or hurts us. We don't just spew back our uh, an offense right back at them that we're able to stay calm and collected in the moment uh, as hard as that is for a lot of us but it is a, all of this is us being surrendered to and submitted to the power of the holy spirit moving and working in us because self-control is not something that we in and of ourselves have the ability to do especially on a consistent basis this is us making a choice to being surrendered to the Holy Spirit, surrendered to the person of Jesus Christ so that he can move and work in us in a way that allows us to respond in a way that is self-controlled and allow us, um, that allows us to respond in a way that is sober-minded. Um, this also brings up the point of being watchful, awake, alert, vigilant, to know what's going on around us. We know and have our ears tuned to know what's happening around us. I remember very distinctly when I studied abroad in Costa Rica during college, how every one of my senses was on just high alert all of the time. And especially during the first like week that I was there, I remember being so exhausted because my ears were perked up constantly having to hear Spanish 100% of the time my um, you know my my mind was on high alert because I was in a new environment so I, I, I walked to um, school from the the family's house that I was staying in and so just navigating my way there not knowing the different things and, and encountering different things along the way um, just making new friendships with the other students that were there just all of these things the food the flavors the everything was a new experience the smells were new and i just remember just being like overstimulated um because everything was new but that's almost like what being self-controlled is like that we have this heightened sense of awareness of what's going on around us so that we are not overcome by our temptation to react instead of respond it's again just having that awareness and i think what is most difficult is when we try to have that kind of awareness in our own strength it is not for us to handle really on our own even though it is called self-control it is allowing us ourselves to be surrendered enough to the lord that he is able to move and work through us that we're surrendered to him and when we when we're about to res to react to something that we kind of have a, a sense of awareness about ourselves to say like lord i'm about to react help me help me holy spirit know how to how to speak truth into this situation help me lord to know whether or not i should be responding god help me to know what words i need to speak or or not speak is this a time when i'm supposed to interject myself or not and if I am interjecting myself, God, give me the, the clarity to know what it is that you want me to say. It's being self-controlled enough to say, not my way, but you, Lord, guide and direct my words, my reactions, my responses. When I want to, to react in a way that is unkind and unloving, I know that is not from God. <laughs> right? That is just not from God because that's not his character. And so in hindsight, it's easy to look back and, and, and say, yeah, I probably shouldn't have responded like that. But self-control is about being able to catch it before it even comes out of our mouth. It's about being able to understand that I'm about to make a poor choice here. Let's reel it back in um, and catch us before we, we move forward. 
Um, there are many things in this life that can make us not have a clear head. Many things in this life. Um, it could be relationships, it could be hurts from our past that cause this um, haze or, or fog over our life that, that make us not able to think clearly about certain situations. Um, Obviously, there are substances that make us not clear-headed, whether it's alcohol or drugs or any of these things. So it, it's this idea of being sober-minded is that we aren't giving our mind over to something that can have greater control of our greater control of us than our ability to have control of ourselves. So if I am losing control with whatever it is. Um, that's happening around me because I'm I'm put allowing something to be put into my body that makes me lose control or I'm allowing a circumstance or situation or hurt from the past to control me in such a way that I, I can't respond in a godly fashion I can't be engaged in this relationship or in this circumstance in a godly way then that's an opportunity for us to, to ask God to, to forgive us to heal us really it's healing us again from the inside out because so much of that comes from a wounded heart a place that we haven't allowed god to come in and heal that part of our heart and so we're just we're reacting we're spewing out um hurts uh, because we have been hurt so all of that uh, to also go on to the second verse which is verse eight and it tell there's two things that i want to talk about real quick here it's that we're protected by the armor of faith. In, in Ephesians 6, it talks about the armor of God. The armor of God is the shield of faith. So here we are talking about self-control. And then in this verse, it talks about, um, let us live in a light, clear-headed, by recognizing that we are protected by this armor of faith, the shield of faith. So our faith in God to move in us, to work in us, to change us, that we are his children, our faith in Jesus, that our salvation is secure, that faith is a shield of self-control. It, it acts as a protective layer for us to live a life that is self-controlled. And then also it goes on to say, wearing our helmet as the confidence of our salvation. So again, going back to the armor of God in Ephesians 6, it talks about our salvation is like a helmet. And it, it, the helmet of salvation, it protects our mind from uh, fear, from worry, knowing that we are saved, that, that Jesus died on the cross to save us, that our future, our eternity is, is secure and made complete in him. That means that when we put on our salvation, when, when God gives us that gift of salvation, we don't have to worry anymore about the things of this life. We don't have to worry about our eternity but we, I think, so often live not grasping hold of the beauty of that helmet of salvation, that armor that we put on. And so it's really a daily choice. Um, I've said it before that that's one of the practices that I like to do in my morning quiet time is actually walk through those uh, putting on the armor of God, that I'm armored up. I put on um, the helmet of salvation, the, the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, and uh, the gospel of peace on my feet. Ready to go, armored on <laughs> for whatever the day has. Um, and it's just such a beautiful picture of how all of it together really brings together this uh, idea of self-control when we're armored up we're ready to, to encounter whatever comes our way with the power of God on our side. Amen? All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you so much this morning that, that you are our protection. You are give us the opportunity to live a life that is self-controlled. And God, I know that in and of ourselves, we do not have the ability to live self-controlled. I don't have the ability to control my tongue. I don't have the ability to control my reactions to things. But God, you, uh, by your power, by the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation and being a, a, a child of yours, you give me that power. So thank you, Lord, that that power to live a self-controlled life is available to all of us. I pray that we would desire to live lives 
that are clear-minded, that we are sober in our, our minds, sober in our hearts, that we're able to, uh, to not get bogged down by the things of this world and allow the distractions and put things in our bodies that uh, cause us to not think clearly. And Lord, I pray that if there are any um, hurts from our past that we have not handed over to you for you to heal, God, I pray that we do that today. I pray that we have the courage to let go of those hurts so that you can heal that part of us and that we would be able to live again just a self-controlled life, that we aren't um, hindered by this hurt from our past, that we don't respond out of the hurt, Lord, but that we respond out of the healing. We respond out of the compassion that you've had on us. We respond out of the places of our life that we have seen your grace and your mercy so profoundly. So Lord God, I thank you that you have shown up in our lives, that you remind us that you are there in the little things and that you care so much about the little things of our life and about the big life-changing things. Father, I pray that there is nothing in our life that you are not mindful of. So Father, I thank you for, for this week. I thank you for where you have brought us. I pray that we just are able to spend time today meditating on this word and allowing these words to transform us from the inside out. In Jesus' precious and holy name, I pray, and may you receive the glory both now and forever. Amen and amen. Well, thank you for being with me this morning. I, I'm just praying that you have an awesome weekend, that you are resting in the presence of God, that he um, gives you exactly what you need to have a restful weekend and to fill up your, your cup of hope and faith and love and joy and be reminded of his grace. Be well and be blessed. Bye-bye.